All right, Charlie, welcome to the show. How are we doing tonight? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Absolutely. It is a pleasure to hear that accent. We once heard an accent like that, uh, and it was a Tennessee Vol. It was Liam Spence from the volunteer baseball team. And I have a funny question for you because these guys, we all laughed. It was it was one of the funniest things we heard. We asked him what he inspired to do. And as an Australian with the same accent as you, he said he wanted to learn Spanish. And so I must ask you, Charlie, do you know any Australian Bluetooth who disconnected? Spanish? Funny you say that. So we went to Mexico last week and we had full access to the resort. Fortunate that UT paid for it. And my favorite, what I learned, <clears throat> uno, uno pina colada sin alcohol, por favor, which means, can I please have a non-alcoholic pina colada? That's the only thing I know. I think the only thing that matters, but I do know a little bit of Spanish from my little trip. I mean, I don't even know how the rest of this episode is going to go, boys, but right there, that is gold. I mean, she just gave us <laughs> Australian accent Spanish. Uh, I, I mean, I don't even know what if I could do with the rest she of She really won up Liam there. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you <laughs> called out Liam for sitting in a stairwell on his episode. So, you know, she's already doing way better than Liam, too. So. <laughs> no lies told. So, you know, I don't know if it's American, I don't know if it's Australian, but I got to know, Charlie, we always want to know, who's your favorite musician or band? Okay, it changes like every week, but I love Pink growing up. Pink was my favorite. Like, I was like five, and I was like, Mom, let me go to the concert, let me go to the concert. And she wouldn't let me because it was swearing, swear words. But Dad and I, I tell you what, when Mom went off to that concert, we had our own little concert. <laughs> <laughs> she, got, she got that new album out, too. Oh, yeah. It's actually, she's performing in New York on my birthday. So I'm going to have to convince Mom. To go. There you go. Well, we know that Charlie's a badass now. She's listening to Pink for sure. <laughs> So this next one is not a normal question to ask. I mean, if you, if, if you can't get up for that, like, something's wrong with you. So, so this next one, Daniel, you will appreciate this. I, I threw a little curveball in here for Charlie. Usually we ask what your favorite movie is, but um, at MLB Spring Training, they were holding up a sign as they walked by that says, what is your favorite Disney movie? I was actually – excited to watch all these grown men say what their favorite Disney movie. So I asked you I saw that video. I what's yours? Yeah, it was the Oakland A's. I growing up, it's it's changed. Growing up, Little Mermaid. 100 percent Let, let me ask oh, you this. Yeah. Do you know anything about Bluey? Oh my gosh. My coach's kids are obsessed with Bluey and they they think I'm related to Bluey. Like they're like are you Bluey's sister? I'm like, yeah, like, of we're course. <laughs> and they hid the TV remote from me when I was babysitting them. It magically disappeared. And Bluey was playing on repeat for three hours. Ooh, look, we're lucky look, you're look, even here right now. Let, let me tell you, there are a lot of other shows that would be awful to get stuck watching. Bluey's not one of them. Not at all. I could watch three hours of that by myself. Man, it was it was difficult, but we so, got through it. So you said it was Little Mermaid then. What is it now? Princess and the Frog. Sweet. Stop. I just love the songs. Well, <laughs> I, I am I am a New Orleans type person, so you 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 got me with that one. And I when it comes to villains, you know, Doctor, how do you say it? Y'all say it. I can't even say it, man. I don't know. You you you're the one that speaks all this stuff. What's the what's the villain name, Doctor? Uh, Put me on the spot, Doctor Fossey. I don't remember his name, but he I call him that... the Voodoo Man. That's that's the easiest yeah. way to do it. All right. So with that, what was the last movie you saw in the theater? Oh gosh. Okay, I wouldn't say a theater, but I'm very close with my roommates, and I have a big monitor in my room, and we'll like make popcorn, and we'll all sit in my bed, and it kind of feels like we're at the theater. But when we watched Ratatouille, and it was a Disney movie. Look at that. Exactly. Yeah. Daniel's still in the 16 million hour wait to ride that ride at Disney. Oh, man. I rode it twice last time I was there. <laughs> Daniel went when it first opened. Bad timing. Oh, if <laughs> we got there right on time. We had the genie thing or whatever. But if you, when we walked out, because we got to pass, the, the line went all the way to the gate. You could play a whole softball game and then waiting lines. Like I waited for Avatar. 
for like two hours and it was four minutes and 30 seconds of my life. <laughs> oh my God. She just, she just nailed Disney in a nutshell. That is the truth. Yeah. All right. So I'm interested with this next one. Who's your favorite athlete besides yourself? That's a hard one because I feel like there are so many people who are extremely inspirational as not only an athlete, but a female athlete. But I feel like for me, you guys probably won't know who she is, but Stacey Porter, by far, she is, she's an Australian. She's been to a lot of Olympics. And I, I remember the coolest thing was I was maybe 15 or 16 and I was pitching. And I was so nervous because this was like the top team where I'm from. I'm playing a field with eight Olympians behind me. She comes up to me, she goes, come on, Char, you got this. And I was like, wow, this is my idol since I was, I have a picture with her at every single softball tournament. My earliest one was when I was maybe like eight. And then I played a game, one game with her and it was the coolest experience. So definitely Stacey. She messages me all the time on Instagram. She's like, what's your game? Good job. And yeah, I have, the, I'm like, I fangirl over her all the time, but I have to like play it off like I'm kidding. Yeah. And what a blessing. I mean, you, somebody you look up to is there alongside you. I mean, that's awesome. So I saw, you know, Charlie taking over the mic and you were asking all your teammates about what superpower they wish they had. Well, one thing I noticed, Charlie, was you didn't say what superpower you wanted. <laughs> so for me, I feel like mind reading would be really fun. Imagine knowing what, like, Everyone was thinking. Or super speed. I do not want to know what everybody's thinking. <laughs> would you think, Randy, if you knew what everyone was thinking, would you think you were a good guy or a bad guy? Terrible. <laughs> I think most people would. They would. And I We'd think find that out that people, most people are terrible, actually. And I think if people knew what I was thinking, they would know that I was terrible. <laughs> You know what the worst you know what the worst one would be, Randy, is when you're talking to somebody and you can't remember their name. And if they could know that I was thinking oh. about how I couldn't remember their name, that's the worst. That happens to like me all the time. I would use an abuser in class. Like I'd be like, Oh, what's the answer? Because they're gonna think about the answer. And I'll be like, Cheers, mate. Just got the answer for free. <laughs> oh man. Charlie, so let's let's go back. Take me to Australia. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're what do you call little kids in Australia? Like little ankle biters. Little little you're a little ankle biter. Just you know, growing up, just trying to figure things out. What's uh tell me about Australia? Cause I'm trying to picture where you're from and like what type of place it is, how big you're it like is. Like where I live. Like what yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So I I'm like biased, but I feel like I live in the best part because I get the best of both worlds. So I'm 40 minutes from the Harbour Bridge, you know, that big bridge that you always see when you Google Australia. So oh, I'm 40 yeah. minutes from the airport, 40 minutes from the city, 40 minutes from all the beaches. Perfect. You don't get the traffic from the city. You get, you know, easy access in there with like trains and buses. Do you live but where I, those where those uh pictures that I see the the spiders are like webbed everywhere? Because that's the part of Australia I'm not going anywhere near. Well, let me let me while I'm talking, let me get this picture up because I live um so 40 minutes from the city. I live 20 minutes, if you drive 20 minutes, bush. So where I live on the back of a nature reserve, little like my brother in there for hours, like we had to put an air tag on his bike because you just couldn't find him. He was in the bush all day. Like we call it, you guys call it the, like when you go for a hike, we call it a bush. The, walk. the, the woods. It's uh, Yeah. Know. So we call it the bush. I come home from school, walking my dog with my mom. This six foot snake is out the front of my house. Nope. nope. Them bad boys can kill you in 30 minutes. What kind of snake is that? It's a red belly black snake. Oh, see, and and it doesn't even really sound that ferocious. That's <laughs> yeah, how you it know it's cute. bad. <laughs> yeah, they ain't cute when you're like it's slithering at you. Six feet. So what was the ultimate demise of the snake? Because let me tell you something. that It wouldn't stand a chance. Not not a chance, not not a five second chance at all. 
the funniest was though is like you kind of like I I'm like I've seen plenty of snakes like don't get me wrong I'll still be like oh my god there's a snake but it's like oh like walk off and it's evident because when I was walking my dog obviously the word got around in our little neighborhood and there was probably like 10 people poking it with a stick this thing is still alive and we're just poking it with a stick carefree (laughs) that's no no thank you so I get the best back to your question I kind of detoured but I live 40 minutes from the city 20 minutes from the bush and I'm kind of central just to everything it's, Daniel, it's, you got gators in your backyard, and you're talking about no things. I was about to picture. say, yeah, he sent us a this picture. Man, yeah, he had like a six, seven foot alligator in a driveway. Uh-uh. <laughs> I mean, Give me was, a snake all day. That's that's not the norm. I was during hurricane. That's not the norm, like, dude. <laughs> that, I'm gonna tell you something. It's if never gonna happen. An alligator we're... in our driveway, it's big problems. We that's what I'm saying. <laughs> me and Randy will never have that happen. Period. No. Oh, so. You know, Australia seems like I don't know, like a pretty sweet place. Every picture, everything that I that I see about it and hear about it, it's like this amazing place. So Nima. Let, let let's break it down for us and just be like, give us one thing that's not so good about it. So I don't feel so bad about not not having the chance to visit there. Okay. So it's traveling because so my parents left they're coming to see me tomorrow haven't seen them in seven and a half months feel bad for them because my mom and dad what's the time it's 9 50 here they left on their flight at eight o'clock they still have another 13 and a half hours to get to LA and then another five hours to Georgia and then a three hour drive to Tennessee so when they see me they'll be up to like their 40th hour of traveling and I'll be like I don't care that you're tired you can't give me the attention so mm. traveling, it's really far away. Man, that that puts a damper on things because you got to have almost a week extra. Like if you're going to go visit there, you almost need a week extra to get there, get acclimated, and then the same thing on the, the way back. That's, yeah, that's, the first, that's the too first much. week that I was here, I played softball over the summer for the Birmingham Thunderbolts, and I was loving it. But it got to like 5 p.m. And I I would be asleep next to the first base coach because I was so jet lagged. I can imagine. Cool. We we complain if we got like I'm an hour ahead of these dudes and I, I complain every time because I'm it's 9 30 my time and I'm sitting here tired. It's She's on your time. Asleep. She feels you. Oh, I feel she you feel, yeah. I thank you. Thank you. At least somebody understands me. So um <laughs> You know, getting back to it, you you mentioned mom and dad obviously coming to visit you. You mentioned brother. Any other siblings? And and if so, what what were the ages between you and your brother or your other siblings? So it's just me and my little rat bag brother. He is 15. So it's weird. Like, I left him and he was probably, like, this much taller than me. Now he's, like, six foot something. I'm going to see this boy when he when I go home in May or something, June, May. I don't be like that ain't my brother when I left him in August, but yeah, nice. just me, brother, and mom. Come so, from a very sporty back, very sporty family. So competitive. Don't ever play any. Don't like. I'll be like, I bet I can't. Oh, it will. I'll turn a competition into anything. I refuse to lose. That's that's what we when we picture you know siblings close in age like that. That's what we picture. We picture all you know. Uh, uh, beat down at every minute that you can get everything's competitive everyone wants to win and then you're talking trash constantly mm-hmm. about it so and my brother plays softball so in australia like men are really good at softball we actually just won the world cup which is crazy like they threw and it's fast pitch too right yeah it's like 90 miles an hour i'll tell you what i ain't standing in the batter's box Catch no, me I, I saw that when i was actually researching it that was over here, we don't. It's slow pitch over here because we're all yeah. older and unathletic. But the guys <laughs> playing fast pitch was crazy. I saw some yeah. videos. They're humming it in there. I, I'll tell you what, men's softball is. If you ever like want to watch, I recommend. They are crazy impressive. What are, are the? What is, is the the distance from oh, the 46. rubber? To, no, get out. Yeah, they they are. They're forty six feet. I was that's I looked it up because 
I saw I was when I saw the her brother, I looked it up like men's fast pitch and it was in Australia. And dude, it was insanity. One of my but, friends, he is he was 18 when he competed at the men's world cup. How fast do you think he was thrown? He was 18. It I'm gonna say I know it in kilometers. You're gonna have to do the little conversion. Okay, well DB's the principal here. He can do the the I'm gonna say it, it was 86 miles an hour. DB, what is that in kilometers? Um, one ten. He was throwing one hundred and thirty-five kilometers per hour from forty-six feet. Yeah, that's like almost. That's that's got to be almost a hundred, right? In miles an hour. That's eighty-three miles an hour. Yeah. That's crazy. So, see, I was pretty close then. Yeah, I, I, that is that is crazy. I mean, there's all right. So, there's one thing I don't want to do in men's fast pitch softball is be a pitcher be the catcher be third base i don't want to be any of those positions uh you don't want to be in slow pitch that third base when me and randy will tell you slow pitch softball no. third base is, is terrible I, too <laughs> yeah i actually love playing third because look let me tell you why because i'm not um the reflexes are i either protect myself or die i would rather <laughs> that than really think about it but in fast pitch, the ball's coming so much faster that you don't have to generate the speed it does it for you. They're probably hitting it out of there 120 miles an hour every time. Yeah. Uh, at least in slow pitch, I think you can you can see a guy 100% his speed. Where, where they're going to hit the, the ball. And Randy, you're better than pitch. me. Maybe I need my eyes checked because that ball came in hot a couple of times. I had one hit me off the side of the head. Oh, oh I mean, it I, does come in fast, no doubt. It, Either way, I mean, either sport, you're you're bringing it. I couldn't do either of those two. So, Charlie, let me tell off, you, I'm I'm two. I'm not in the realm of any of the three, y'all. Um, I did not play baseball, and I play slow pitch softball. My hand eye coordination is not on the same level as any of y'all, and so that's probably why I'm the one that got hit in the head. Hey, you're an athlete, bro. In my eyes, athlete. I'll stick to football and trying to hit people. I'd rather just do that. So, Charlie. Going back to to being an athlete, you just mm -hmm. said it. Now, at what point do you become an athlete? Obviously, we know you played softball. Um, you know, from what we can tell, there was some swimming. There's cross country, track and field, um, all of those sports. And what else did you do? Was there or was there anything that you didn't do? Well, school like sport is very different in Australia, and I feel like I found that out when I got here. So I did more outside curricular activity from school and that's normal um, for everyone. Like my school didn't have a softball team. So I would have. What, to, what high school did you go to? I went to Marion Catholic college, Kent Hurst. So there's no, there's no sports at that high school. There just wasn't softball. No. So like, it'll be more, it's not competitive because which is a challenge like this was what I struggled with because I was so passionate about becoming the best athlete I could and striving to be the best but it's hard to be the best in the environment when sport in school was more of a recreational thing for my friends does that did that make sense did I yeah so it's it's more of like an intramural let's have fun it's competitive to an extent yeah. that there's a winner and a loser but it's not what's getting you to Tennessee to play softball there. So, of course, me being competitive, like I won the cross country by like two minutes, something ridiculous, because the next best person was like, well, there's no point in me trying because this competitive girl, she ain't going to let anyone win. So I like that part, but. Yeah. You just probably just dominated people. You just looked at them and they just <laughs> collapsed. They're just like, oh, no. I'm good. Yeah, I just I don't like losing. <laughs> All right. So then if if it's not high school, you're obviously playing softball at a high level doing something. Because mm -hmm. let me let me read you some of these the accolades. So you had to be playing for someone. Extra inning softball, you were rated as a number 21 pitcher duo. Uh you were number 57 overall prospect in the class of 2022. You were selected as a member of the Australian Junior Aussie Spirit Team. Um, they were slated to compete at the 2020 U18 Softball World Championships in Peru, but um, obviously we all know what happened in 2020. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going to kind of glance over it. Um, 
but you were also named pitcher of, of the series in the 2020 U18 Australian National Championships. I mean, with that, I mean, in that 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 championship, you threw 33 innings uh, for New South Wales, a .62 ERA and 45 strikeouts. That is just absurd. That's just crazy stuff. You were also named South Wales Softball Junior Athlete of the Year in 2021. So a lot of accomplishments, a lot of accolades. Um but I would say none more impressive than your your one and only trip to the U.S. in 2019, traveling to Mankato, Minnesota, um, where the Aussie Diamonds for the Peppers Carnival, or Carnival, however you want to say it, where you pitched 14 innings, racked up 19 strikeouts, 0. 0.00 ERA. Yeah, I was 15 in an under-19 competition. So when you talk about there's no high school softball because it's not like a competitive thing, but then I list all of those accomplishments, who are you playing for during this time? Like, how do you end up with all of those accolades and, and all that success? So I, there's like levels. So I play for my local area, which is just like within seven uh, you don't know kilometers maybe like five miles from my house and then you play in a local competition there on a Saturday and then you get chosen into your like regional team so like I'm trying to put in perspective so like I would play for Knoxville and we'd play like another area down the road like we'd verse other people and then from that you get chosen to represent your state so like if I was to represent Tennessee and then you were and then that's the New South Wales team, which is where I got the picture of the series and at nationals. And then you get chosen into the Australian team and then you go off and play international carnivals, which is pretty cool. So basically when you play well, you get almost recruited in a sense to play at another level. Yeah. And then if you do well there, then you go to another level on each one of these levels gives you the, opportunities to travel to the states and, and and play in different things and um it's interesting um you know with that what would you say was you know your favorite experience of, of all the successes that you had which one was your favorite it, it wasn't on the list but it was I got a call from the head Australian coach asking if I would like to participate in the Olympic training camp prior to the Tokyo Olympics. So I got to, um, it was kind of just like, I got to experience what it was like and I got to warm up with the Australian team and I got to wear the uniform and I just got exposed to what being an athlete at the next level is. And that was, that was pretty cool. Also standing next to my best friend in June, singing the national anthem was pretty cool as well. Yeah, what no a, doubt. What an honor. You can yeah. sing. You can sing. Not very well. Good enough to go out there like and do Chris it. Chris Stapleton out there. Pardon? No, I was going to ask. So we've talked to – we've had a lot of softball players on, and it used to be that they would commit when they were like 13, 14 years old to different colleges. And obviously that's changed now. So with you, an interesting recruiting process, obviously not playing high school, but coming into the States and playing and then having the pandemic and COVID-19 happen uh, where coaches couldn't come see you and travel was, you know, weird and all that stuff. How hard was it to talk to coaches and for you to kind of narrow down what schools you wanted to go to without being able to make all those trips? So it was my recruiting process, Karen and Ralph say they've never done anything like this before. So I would, I didn't, my family, like no one in Australia is really, there's, it's only just starting to go to college, but really the only person before me was Gabby Plain at Washington. So for me, we didn't really know what to do. So we just emailed coaches, but I started emailing them. 2020 so I was really behind the eight ball given that everyone in my year could commit from eighth grade or something crazy like that so we kept our hopes up like we were like oh my gosh this is so stressful I'm uncommitted oh my golly gosh just kept emailing and emailing and the hardest part was is that in Australia our COVID rules were extremely strict to the point that 
I did 168 days of online learning in my junior and senior year of high school. I couldn't travel more than three miles from my house and I could only go outside for 30 minutes every day to exercise. Oh. So getting recruited was extremely hard because not only was I facing the fact that everyone was already committed, but I couldn't leave the country, let alone three miles from my house. So I just kept emailing and then um Karen and Ralph responded and they're like oh my gosh I love Australia I was like you should come and see it it's beautiful and I did a zoom pitching session with our pitching coach Megan so I bet you never heard anyone getting recruited by zoom well no I mean I think that we all saw a, a lot of things change during during COVID so as much as you know my kids were definitely doing online learning and that stuff too but we didn't have the restrictions weren't as tight in the States as, you know, could go more than three miles and all that. So for you, did you feel like you were going to miss out on a high level college like Tennessee or how much pressure did you really feel as you're on a zoom? Because it's not the same, right? You can mess up on a zoom call. It's like, well, there's only so much attention span that a coach is going to pay. If they're in person, they can read body language, kind of hear what you're saying, kind of feel, you know, the, the aura. So how tough was that? It was definitely stressful, um, but I feel like in myself, I knew I've given it my best shot. I can't do anything more. I'm leaving this into the what happens happens, and I'm so grateful that it worked out because there's no place I'd rather be than good old Rocky Top. Good old Rocky Top. So that was the next question I was going to ask. Obviously, you know, you said they reached back out, and you know, they said they loved Australia without even coming to Knoxville. What was the deciding factor in making you choose Tennessee? So obviously home is very far away. Like very. I have to wait until 5 p.m. every day until I can talk to my parents. So that was that's really hard for me, given the fact that I've left my whole life back home. Come like coming here, I only knew the coaches. I only knew Car Karen, Ralph, and Megan. So for me, I wanted something that felt like home, away from home. And something about Tennessee had it it stole my heart like I felt like going there like and it was a big relief like what I remember the first zoom meeting we had we all just went I'm gonna go to school there like it was I can't describe the feeling but we just knew it was right so just the family environment that has so let me ask this obviously you get to the point now where like Tennessee is home but it was there ever any point where it began to get dicey as it that you could even leave Australia because this is a tough time to even try to like get any kind of documentation to even leave the country much less for school um and all the just admission requirements that you have to do for that so, so what were some of the obstacles in just getting out of the country once you said, oh, oh, that's where I'm going? So I was, we, it was pretty lucky. Our border restrictions eased as I was getting ready to go. However, applying for a visa was so horrible. Mom, I know you're going to watch this when you get off the airplane. I love you so much for doing that because, man, oh, it was stressful. And like, there was some points where we didn't even know if my visa was going to come in. I was going to have to fly to a different state to get, have an interview. It was stressful. It was stressful for me. So I can only imagine how stressful it was for my parents, but just like the visa and the legal documents, making sure that I was allowed, especially with um school. So our school system's different. So my like transcripts, like I know that I had to do a science and I'm so thankful. My mom made me do biology. Didn't want to do it, but I did it. And I got a good grade in it too. So like the difference in like transferring over, not only just like traveling, but the difference in like school, softball, everything like that. So Charlie, I got to ask. So when you come to Tennessee, you know, obviously, you know, um, you see it on Instagram and all that. You went straight off the airplane to Rocky Top. What was the culture shock like? And maybe you don't feel that at first, but coming from Australia to East Tennessee. Well, I was in Alabama for the first three months of my time in the U.S. Oh, I'm sorry. But I, uh... <laughs> I know, that's, that's the worst, golly. 
<laughs> um, but welcome to America. Here's <laughs> Alabama. But every my coach to shock was everyone saying, "Man, I was yeah. like, at first, like I was like, excuse me, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this is a thing, and it's then a term I, of endearment. Yeah, so that was like a, a culture shock. Oh wait, what was, what was Charlie? That? Come on down to Florida. And I have. I was there. You, over Christmas. you will never hear that again. Sarasota. That's where I was over Christmas. So, I just, I just want to, Randy. You know, we talk about. She's talking about the way we talk. Like I text my wife during this episode already, and I said, she says, "Cheers, mate." She called ankle biters. I mean, I said she spoke Spanish. I was like, dude, I just I just want to talk like her. I want to be around people like her all day, every day. Well, everyone now at UT softball, when I say no, and they say that I sounded like no. So whenever <laughs> someone answers no, everyone says no. Like my roommates, I'm surprised she hasn't come in here yet and started saying no. Like <laughs> she's horrible at it, but she thinks she's Australian. She's applying for a for Australian citizenship. It is really hard when I first started talking not to to try to say something, but it's I don't want to, but I just feel myself okay, almost wanting. No, does. no. I, I did it to Liam, but I won't do it to you. You're too nice. You're too nice. <laughs> but so I gotta ask you. So on obviously you're coming to play for some legendary coaches that are legends in the game. So as much as it was a, a risk for you and something that you wanted to do, but for them too, right? They're taking a chance on something that they've really only seen on a Zoom. Exactly. And obviously they can watch film, but I mean, how grateful are you that they're taking or that they did take the chance on on you? That's what I like. I spoke about this with mom. I said, it's a two-way gamble. Like I'm taking the risk of, I've never been to Tennessee before. What if I think the air smells funny or if I think the train track behind the field is annoying. Like you get what I mean. It is. But it's also a flip side of Karen and Ralph haven't seen me play before and they're taking a gamble too. So I don't know. It's kind of like a fun little game, but. No doubt. Well, it, look, it's so far so good, right? You seem yeah. to fit right in. And I was going to talk about that. You get your first action of the season. Uh, this year, you said you're down in Mexico. Thank you for UT for paying for that. And I watched all, all those games, got to see you pitch two innings, striking out the first two batters of your collegiate career in the 11 nothing win over Sacramento State. So I got to ask you, of all of the things that you went through, the visa, your mom doing all that, the travel, leaving your little brother, leaving everything behind, what were your emotions like when you finally get in the game and then strike out your first two? I was just so grateful that that ball hit the spot. That's I was when I I can't when I play like you've you've had it in you've spoken to me for almost an hour now yeah you can't like I'm bright bubbly I'll hold a conversation when I'm pitching I do this thing called hard and soft focus so my soft focus is like turning around talking to the teammates and then hard focus I look at one singular lace on that glove I cannot tell you who the batter is cannot tell you can't see the umpire behind the plate. But I can see that lace on that glove. So I had no thoughts in that moment. And then I went, I remember when I, I did a little fist pump. I was like, I did it. And I was happy that the first one was out of the way. I was like, okay, I know I can do it. Let's do no, it again. Absolutely. So talk about that trip as a whole, though. You talked about how great the trip was. But, you know, and obviously you learned a little bit of Spanish. We kind of talked about that. But what was that trip like for you? Obviously, coming from Australia, you moved to East Tennessee. You spent some time in Alabama, which is like another country. Now you're in Mexico. I mean, what is it all like for you? You're, I mean, you're traveling the world, literally. I'm just so fortunate that the sport that I love has given me so many opportunities. Like, if you said to me three years ago, you would be playing in Mexico. I would have laughed. Like, Mexico? But it was awesome. It was hot. I love hot I was going to say, how hot was it? And it was, it was like... 32 degrees celsius which is like 85 i think something like that so it was nice and warm i liked some like i like that i've traveled i've been to now i played softball in australia u.s mexico and canada and i love that every single country plays the game different so in mexico i liked i liked how important the little things were in life so i would I liked how all the locals would come and sit on the fence. They didn't know who we were, but they were cheering us. No. I just like, my favorite part about Mexico was definitely the appreciation for the little things in life. And it made me 
take a step back and realize like how fortunate I am to have this opportunity to be healthy, to have access to clean drinking water because they don't have that there. So that was the oh, I say that to, you know, they mentioned it, that I, I do a little coaching. My daughter plays competitive yeah. softball. I talk about perspective a lot. And we've talked about it. On, we've had 189, 190 athletes on the show. And we ask them that too. Do you ever get a chance to, to have the moment sink in? And you have a lot more moments left, right, Charlie, in softball. But it's, it's refreshing to hear that you are taking in these moments as they happen because perspective is so big. And as you get older, like we are, we're almost 40 years old. So like double your age. Oh, but, fuck. Yeah, you, it goes so fast. And it's like in the blink of an eye. But you're right. To being able to think like clean drinking water – and the people appreciating that you're there, not knowing who Charlie is, right? They just know they're seeing some softball. They love it, and they're getting to cheer you on. So that's that's really great to hear the perspective. But I do got a question. So the team, 11-1, and one, you kind of mentioned that you're ranked fourth in the country. There's a lot of expectation around Tennessee. I obviously, you talked about the week lose legends in the game. But since your sole loss to Cal State Fullerton, you guys have won six straight, and outscored your opponents 45 to 1. Now, one thing I do hate, and I tell my girls all the time, if they say, oh, losing's a good thing. No, it is not. Losses are never good. But did that loss help your team get more focused? I feel like uh, that loss was, like, I hate losing, but it was a good thing. Like, it was kind of like, hey, we've got some more bite in us. Like, you might have beat us this time, but watch what we're going to do to everyone else. And y'all have, yeah. I mean, what's the difference? I'm not, not focused because I'm sure you guys were focused going into Cal State Fullerton, but very respectable program. But you guys have played some really good teams and like dispatched of them, right? I watched the whole Clemson game the other day. That's a really, really solid team. And, you know, we just look, I mean, you guys are finding a way, scratching them out. The pitching has been off the chain. But, I mean, what is it about this? Is it the bond? What is it about this team that's making you guys go on this special run so far? I feel like we all just, we have a little, we all just play for each other. We just, I can't describe, it's just, we're the dream team, man. No, I, I've, I've seen it so far. So I got to ask, obviously we've seen you pitch a little bit. Is there ever a chance we're going to see you in the batter's box? We're going to see you hit. Funny enough, I practiced today. We played a little, little game. It was pitchers versus freshmen. And the pitching team had to like, you just kept running until the ball got back to home plate. We, I didn't hit the walk-off home run, but Ashley Rogers did, and the pitchers beat the freshmen. Let's go. Bunch of POs, and we won. There we go. I'll Look. tell you what, my sad double was – and there was only four fielders, and I got a double, but it was not pretty. I'll tell you what. So, you know what? I'll stick to throwing the ball. I'll stick to being on the other end. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe when I'm back in Australia, I'll hit. Yeah, no doubt. So obviously for those that don't know, you know, I said I watched the games or whatever, big softball fan. My daughter's watching watches the games. Give us some names of some girls to really watch out for on Tennessee's team, hitting and pitching, because there's really a, you got a lot of freshmen, a lot of young faces on this team that we haven't seen. So give us some names that we might not know. I feel like I could like rattle off the whole team. Like I feel like every single person, freshman, super senior, doesn't matter every single person is going to step in the box and be like watch me prove that I'm meant to be here um but I feel like Ashley Rogers she's like I look up to her so much I'm on her team but she is the coolest athlete she throws gas then pitches she moves does. Colin Pickens wow you wow. talk about throwing hard she throws hard she pitched against Clemson I was she so did. proud I was like Colin you did so good and as a freshman, I mean, you're a freshman too, but the the moxie, you know, the resolve of a freshman to pitch the way she did against Clemson, I mean, it was a sight to see. I was I was uber impressed because, I'll be honest, I really didn't hear a lot about Pickens coming in, and I'm watching her pitch, and I'm like, well, my goodness, she looks like one of the best pitchers in the country. Yeah. Charlie, right. true story that Randy doesn't even know. When I was researching what Tennessee uh, volunteer softball player I was going to ask to come on, I was actually looking at you and her and it was the Australian thing that uh, it was when you did the, when you were asking the superhero question and I heard your accent and I was like, she's the one, like I've, we've got to have her. So I don't care how good Piggins is. We're having Charlie on here. Yeah. My accent, I, I asked um, social media, I was like, 
No, I'll do every single video. I love talking. Try to take that microphone. You said, I mean, we like your accent, so we'll give you the microphone. I was like, perfect. What That's funny because LSU soccer, we've had Shannon Cook on from, and she's from uh, United Kingdom, and she does the same thing. She does all their videos, and she loves asking questions. So I don't know. It's just maybe maybe y'all's thing. I love talking from the microphone. The oh. video, the video where you you know you guys come out wearing the fur coat and and pull out the uh, the powder blues. Yeah, summit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, summit blues. I apologize. R.I.P. to pass something legend in the game. And how do you right. mess that up, Randy? I, I know. Big, big, big fan. I'll edit so that out. I don't want to put you on blast. Tell <laughs> every, who who was the player wearing the fur coat, Charlie? That's Aubrey Leach. She, I, she was rocking that thing, though. Yeah. How, how fun was that video? It looked like y'all were having a blast. It was. Because so we were, we circle up at the end of every practice and this music started playing. And Karen was like, turn it off. And we're like, oh, someone's going to get in trouble. And then we're talking and the music's still playing and the two boys walk out, our managers in suits. And we're like, what on <laughs> earth is going on? And she's in the pimp coat. Yeah. And then she takes it off. And we're like, that's the first time we ever saw that uniform. And we were, some people were crying, jumping, laughing. It was the coolest. That's so clean too. So last question I've got before I turn you over to this or that, the Tennessee Classics on deck, how excited are you specifically and your team to be to debut at home? I and mean, you guys have started out the first, what, 12, 13 games on the road. How excited are you guys to be in Knoxville playing in front of our home fans? I'm super excited, not only because my parents will be there for the first game, but I have I've made so many friends, not only athletes, but people in my class. And I have people messaging me, like my friends, like, I'm going to come and cheer you on. So just knowing that I have my teammates, my coaches, and people supporting us, like cheering us on. It just makes me happy that we have so much support. And it's going to be a good environment. Great environment. I will tell you, though, Charlie, I'm sure you've probably been told this, but Tennessee fans, loyal to a fault, a little bit crazy. We're a little crazy. It's fine. But as far – obviously, you guys have a legendary history – with that program. Um, but, but for me personally, it just, I'll be there watching you. I'm six and a half hours away, so I won't be in person a lot, but we <laughs> definitely, right. me and my, I have a, that's right. I have a 13 year old daughter. She watches the games and uh, we'll be watching for sure. And I'm excited because I think that, you know, last year ended a little unceremoniously. I thought the team had a lot of potential and I think you guys can just take that torch and, and run even further with it. Sure. That fire and I don't I don't have the schedule up just at the moment. I'm pulling it up as we speak. We're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find this out for Randy right now. Uh, see, Ole Miss comes to y'all because Ole Miss is the closest school to Oh, I've uh, already looked it up. They don't oh, come anywhere near us. They don't come to Starkville either? Uh, I don't even think they play Dang. them. Do they play yeah, them? they don't play them. Fayetteville, that's, you can cut the drive to four and a half hours. It's, it's a little bit shorter. They play in LSU in Baton Rouge the week before. We're already down there, two weeks before. You could cut your drive only by a couple hours, unfortunately. He could, if if it was Oxford, he could make an hour drive. It'd be a lot easier. So, but ne <laughs> next year he's got you. He will be in Oxford, only making that hour drive for that series. And then I promise you, Randy will have no problem giving all the Ole Miss fans a problem in the the, in the business. Out of the way. <laughs> but I'll say this in regards that he brought up the video with the jacket. I saw that the day it was released, and you know people have an issue with Tennessee baseball and softball. The swagger is amazing. They're just jealous. It's it's plain and simple. Y'all, Tennessee, I'm an LSU fan. Y'all bring more swagger than us and everybody else, whether it's softball or baseball. Y'all y'all know how to do things. Yeah, we are. We're the everything school. The everything school. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Randy reminds me of that because y'all well, went to the football game and y'all came down to Baton Rouge and beat the mess out of us. So uh, y'all are pretty good at everything. But <laughs> – with that, we're going to get on to a game. And you know what? Like, I mean, if there's anybody, Daniel, that I feel like is a going to be a professional at this or that, it's definitely Charlie. Like, I mean, so I'm going to lay down the rules, but I, right. I, I know you got this. It's it's one option or the other. You just can't say neither or you can't say both. You ready? I'm ready. Bring All it right. on. All right. You know, can you say, Daniel, can you say the words a softball question out the gate to a softball <laughs> player? No, this no. is a, a layup. It's, it's a layup. A layup. It's a, I, see, a he, normal, he normally he normally does this or that. He passed the buck to me. I don't know why. I think he's scared of you, Charlie. He's intimidated. <laughs> that's that's not the case. I'm just being a team player. 
equal <laughs> opportunity uh you know interviewer here yeah, yeah i hear you so the layup question pizza or tacos pizza what do you eat on your pizza yeah i'm, I'm curious okay depends who's paying if i'm paying say it's free you're not paying charlie garlic pizza with shrimp on top oh stop right. all right okay yeah. never mind next question <laughs> Hey, that's how I made it, it, it up right there. It ain't, <laughs> it ain't where I thought it was going to go, but it ain't much better. Where do you stand on pineapples? Uh-uh. Okay. I will, Ooh, that's you, like, you recovered. Uh-uh. <laughs> Anchovies? Uh-uh. Oof, okay. All right. So are you more of a beach person or a lake person? Beach, 100%. I'm from Australia. It's an island. Come on. I don't know. Some people like hitting the lake. I don't. I don't. Uh, especially uh, you, you four I mean, ladies. A... Y- y'all be like uh, water skiing out on the lake and doing crazy stuff. I don't want island. any water. It's a that big I island see. too. Pardon? It's a big island. He said it's a big island, but I don't want any water that I can't see. Like what's underneath it? You know, I don't. The lakes kind of freak me out a little bit. Yeah, like what's under it. Well, what if it's a red belly black snake or whatever you say? Yeah, she I sent the picture of the snake. If they were swimming at the bottom of the lake. <laughs> That's where we want them because they're dead. Okay, so I used to always think I wanted to go to Australia. You show me the picture of the snake. I've seen the pictures of the giant spider webs. I know that you got alligators. And then on top of that, I see the pictures of the king or the videos of the kangaroos punching people. Fighting each other. I, I don't want nothing to do with it. You know what? I'm never going down under. I can't Fun fact. It. Fun fact, I was on a movie TV commercial that would play every time in the movies for an Australian zoo. So you ever come to Australia, Featherdale Wildlife Park. Let me ask you a question, Charo. This is not part of this or that, but like do kangaroos just like walk up to your back door? So not where I live, but my cousin's house they do and my mom's work they do. So like when it would rain, I would pitch at my mom's work because she had like a big indoor center and kangaroos would be like 100 feet. Like, I mean, do they like come up and like like put the dukes up? Like y'all gotta throw hands? I mean, what's the deal? Uh-uh. They'll like they'll hop I... away. But some of them, like if they've got a little like Joey, maybe. I picture a kangaroo, every kangaroo in Australia that comes up to you or gets near you has boxing gloves on. It's yeah. Auto- automatic. Like like that guy that jumped out of his car to save his dog and like punched the kangaroo in the face. Yeah. Some Rich. of them are pretty cute. Randy, Charlie you live is such a boring life. We got raccoons and squirrels. They got gators and kangaroos, bro. Hey, Jim, okay. I'm cool with it, dude. I'm cool <laughs> with it. Uh-huh. Charlie, what do you? What's your? What's your take on Outback Steakhouse? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing, I've never had it in America because I'm kind of scared. I feel like they're gonna say to me, "Get a mate," and I'll be like. Did you just no they're gonna say good day ma'am and you're gonna be like what i'll be like no the little no but um my dad cooks in mean steak so like we never really went there do they are boomerangs a thing and i'll show you um like yes but i don't like it's not really it's it's um traditional to the indigenous australians so it's very it's for like aboriginal people like it's like part of their culture but not like for me I've never seen one work in person. All right. Yeah, I I've never I think I've seen one and tried it and yeah, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. <laughs> what let me ask this last question and then Jen can get back to this. All these hit me at once. Yeah, you you gave me the this or that segment just so you could take it from me. <laughs> do you, is crocodile dundee like the Chuck Norris of Australia. Like my dad will walk around. That's not a knife. This is a knife. <laughs> this is I'm, a like, knife. I'm like, dad, you look nothing like you, man. <laughs> if but, there's ever a time that I've tried to impersonate, you know, an Australian accent, it's always been with the crocodile Dundee. I don't do good at it. I'm sure both these guys have done it. We've all said, oh, it's for not a knife. sure. This is a knife. <laughs> uh, so moving on. This, these are the questions I'm actually interested because in, we were talking about uniforms earlier. We're going to start with uh, two matchups and then, and then we'll face them off. So the pinstripes or the, the orange uniforms? Orange. All right. The smoky grays or the blues? Oh, grays. 
All right. So now give me the Grays against the Orange. Gray. So Smoky Grays win it. They're so clean. Yeah. Those are good uniforms. I kind of hate the Smoky Grays because that's what Tennessee football wore when they came into LSU and whooped our ass. So we're gonna wear them Friday night too when we come down to Baton Rouge. <laughs> You ain't ready for that smoke, but we'll we'll leave that for another another segment. All right, Charlie, is the glass half full or is it half empty? Half full. I'm a very positive person in life. I feel like you got to be. I, I can definitely tell that. I, I have no doubt. I'm not a positive person. It's half empty all the time for me, but <laughs> that's me. All right, this one's going to be fun. All right, so you had mentioned – the concert earlier in New York and all that. And so that may play into this question. First, if you can go to any concert there is or any sporting event, which one are you picking, concert or sporting event? Okay, I feel like that's hard because I feel like the Super Bowl, because we don't have American football in Australia. So, like, my first football game was the Ball State versus Tennessee football game. Didn't know any of the rules. I was did asking you, Did you go to Tennessee versus Alabama by chance? I sure did. And I sat it right in front of that goalpost. That's what's I was up. Like, my car goes, oh my gosh. She's like, Charlie, be quiet. This is what? this is history. Like, where where did that goalpost go? It's in, currently at the bottom of the UT River. In the river. Who who did it? I know Charlie. you know. Charlie. You Everywhere. were there. Randy, are you jealous I, with all these Tennessee athletes who've came on and said they were a part of this process? I, I, yeah, I am. I'm very jealous. I think Charlie like tore the goalpost down and threw in the river. Well, I had recruits, so I was on my best behavior. So I was watching it all unfold. I was on FaceTime to my mom, like, oh my God, so you, I'm never coming home. And you saw it happen, but you didn't participate right in front of my face. Okay. All right. So you're not a snitch. So we know you want to go to a Super Bowl. We'll, we'll we'll expand upon this. We'll we'll give you the Super Bowl. Let's go ahead and go music concert. So, who are you seeing and where? That's a hard one. I feel I've been to a Pink concert before. Fabulous. I would. So go if you could go see Pink anywhere, because you mentioned New York, but is that the spot, or is there somewhere even more glamorous you want to go see Pink? I don't. New York sounds pretty cool. I really want to go there. So let's go New York. Pink in New York, Mom. November. Where Where's the uh, Where's the Super Bowl? If you could pick the destination for the Super Bowl, what city you want to go watch it in? Mm, I feel like I went to Vegas over the summer with my family. That would be pretty cool with all them pretty lights. So, so New York and Vegas, getting it done with the big bright lights. Mm -hmm. All right. Such a such a tourist thing to say. All right, well, now we're really going to find out about you. You know, you're you're very outdoorsy and you're very you're very tough, tough young woman. So with that, I got to know, would you rather be attacked by a tiger or a grizzly bear? And let me just go ahead and say before you think about this answer, there's no good situation or scenario in this, but it's about which one you would rather try to fight off. All right, I'm playing tactics. <laughs> I feel like, look, I'm 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 not the slowest runner, but I'm not the fastest. Oh Lord, here we go. I have a this. very good feeling. It, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna outrun a bear or a tiger, I mean the tiger can probably climb a tree, and I can climb a tree, so that's no good. But I feel like can a bear climb a tree? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh no! And, and They're Charlie, like let me tell you, at it. and let me tell you why they started to freak out a little bit. We've only had one person who actually had the audacity to say they would outrun them, either of them, and it was Christian <laughs> Scott from Tennessee baseball. So don't be the next Tennessee athlete that said you'll outrun either of them because it ain't happening. I ain't outrunning them, man. <sighs> Blake Burke, you know, from 35? the baseball. Yeah, thirty-five miles an hour for the grizzly bear. Blake Burke, big old Blake Burke from the baseball team, said he's gonna play dead with the bear. And he's like the only one I think has a chance with the bear. This is my this is my strategy. I'm walking through the Smoky Mountains. I see a bear. I'm like, oh my gosh! I'm a walk slow. The bear starts running. I'm a run. Remember, I won the cross country at school. I got the endurance. I don't know if that bear does. I'm gonna run to Publix, get some honey, throw it at it. I'm out of there. <laughs> I win. I think I'm not the, thinking about going back if I get away. Yeah. Charlie's so nice. She's like, let me get you some food. I see you're hungry. 
I think her best shot would be to just talk to the bear. I mean, oh yeah, she's such like, a delight. Like, she she might become best friends. They might sit down and have honey together. Come on, man, let me pause. All right, all right. So we're really gonna find out about you with this last question. This this tells us everything, Charlie. Would you rather betray your best friend, and I mean betray them, or be jailed for a crime you didn't commit? Wow. I'm really going to get exposed here. How long are we in jail for? Five years right. minimum. Yeah, we're going five years. What? What's What's the... What did I do? What did I do? Something you didn't do. <laughs> Something you didn't do, I mean, but, like, but like, what, what, we'll say, I don't know. I don't know what gets you five years these days. Um, I don't know. I guess like, uh, am I charge? shoplifting? Am I catching a building on fire? Like, I think I think you beat somebody with a softball bat. With is an assault charge. Yeah, sorry, Mads. I'm gonna have to betray you, bro. I ain't going to jail. <laughs> well, I'll Honestly. let da- I'll let Daniel tell you exactly what he would do. Look, Charlie. These two dudes are my best friends, but when it comes to this question, like. I'm going to stick the knife as far possible in their backs and, and just roll out because I ain't spending 10 years, five years, five weeks, five minutes, five seconds in jail. Just not doing it. I'm I'm not even going in the parking lot. He said he ain't even visiting us. If we're in jail for the crime he committed, he like, good luck. Yep. Like I look, I feel like if I went to jail, talk like I ain't ever going. I'm a little too goody two shoes. But I would have everyone wrapped around my finger with my little accent. Be like <laughs> you hear what I got to say? Oh, wow. Gather no. around, mates. He'd be yes. like, No, Charlie, you're gonna hear what I have to say. Yeah, I wouldn't survive a day in jail. Maddie, on the other hand, she'll survive. She'll take <laughs> Nor. Over- no. No. Oh, Charlie, that you're off the hot seat. It, that's it. Thanks you, for you, having me. You survived. So I'll give you the option right now. Plug or promote yourself. Anything that you want. Any. This is your time. Vol softball. We're cool. Come watch us. Vol softball. So let me let me do let me help you out because I, I know your mind is on the game. So. If you want to check out Tennessee this weekend, they got a double on Friday. They got probably most likely a double on Saturday, right? You know, you know that you got App State at three Eastern time on Friday. You play Jacksonville State at 530 Eastern time on Friday. You turn around Saturday uh, for brunch at 1230. You're taking on Belmont. And then I guess it's to be determined based on who wins and and all that on when you play again and who you play. So check them out, SEC Plus Network, going over to utsports.com, click watch, click listen. You'll get to hear the game, watch the game, check it out. You'll get all the details, and you'll get to see the Lady Vols do their thing. If you want to know more about Charlie, if you want to see what she's doing on a Wednesday night, maybe she's recording a podcast, maybe she's, you know, watching Ratatouille. Who knows? Go <laughs> Going over to Instagram at Charlie Orsini or going over to at ball underscore softball. You'll get all the details for the games and you can just follow them and, and see their progress and see if if 11 and one turns into a conference championship and a conference championship turns into a national championship. Who knows? Could it happen, right? Yeah. So no, here's going to here, happen. We're speaking it into existence, Daniel. Let's, it let's speak happen. it into We want existence. Oklahoma. Yeah. So, so Charlie, when when all that happens, you got to come back on, and we got to talk about it. For that's sure. the only. That's the only deal. Can you do that? Time. All right. Hey, that Dad, is, we'll be in front of the camera. I love talking. I'll let's. It is a deal. It is done. We're we're bringing you back on. Actually, we'd love to have you back on, regardless of of how it goes. So, um, you've been great. We wish you all the best. Good luck. Be safe. Be healthy. And go, Lady Vol softball. Thanks for having me. I've had a blast. Absolutely. That's Charlie Orsini, everybody. We're Before gonna you take... let her go, Daniel, hold on, hold on. I think Randy oh. has a special, a special visitor that wants to talk to Charlie. 
Charlie, oh, this don't I, happen that often. Charlie, I got it. This is a special guest. She wants to say, hey, she's nervous. She's standing beside me, like, geeking out right now. So I got to <laughs> see. She don't even know what to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give her the mic, though. Pick that off. It's too big for your head. Put it on. Hey, Charlie. <laughs> hey, girlfriend. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You're so pretty. Oh, uh, I could hit you with the inner reverse card right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> These things are too big for my head. What, what position do you play? I play second. So you picked the wrong one. You got to be pitching, girl. girl. I tried. It didn't work. Pitching? <laughs> yeah, it's all right, though. She can, she can rake, though, Charlie. She she can swing it. She's good. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Ra Randy yeah. Ain't, got the pit, ain't got the patience for her to be a pitcher. Full count. Load of bases. Two out. Okay. Box. I'm okay. in the box, right? Okay. Yeah. What pitch do you want? Hmm. If, if uh, to hit a good ball, I want to hit the um, home run, the winning walk off. Uh, down, by, down by run, probably low, but probably low down the middle. That's where I, That's yeah. That's why I don't want to pitch it. Why do you hit up high? When I'm pitching, I don't want to pitch any. Oh, down. pitch it! Oh, yeah. oh, I thought I don't pitch. I, I know, but she does. Oh, That's what she's saying. She's not okay, throwing. I got you. it now. I got it now. I thought we were talking. Okay, I got it now. <laughs> well, you hit the home run. You won. I pitched the fatty. Oh, okay. I'm gonna hit. I'm. I'm gonna hit it out of the park. Oh, yeah. we got a chat. We got a challenge on our hands, Charlie. When season is over, and and Lila's got some more time under her belt to get some get some practice in. We're lining this up. Well, this this is what we'll do. We'll put we'll put Lila on Zoom and you on Zoom, and you'll pitch, and she'll swing the bat. <laughs> this is so, so like uh um uh, the Wii baseball. I was just about to yeah. say that. Yep. <laughs> that would be so funny. But Charlie, we'll let you get out of here. We uh Ran Randy said Lila just had to talk to you, so that that's the first. So you got to be the first guest to get talked to by one of our kids. It was lovely to meet you. It was lovely to meet you too. All right, Charlie. Appreciate that. That's uh, you gave. Randy has some some brownie points and some some dad credit going into the account. So I'm sure he appreciates that too. Thank you, Charlie. You're welcome. All right, Charlie. Get out of here. Go do what you guys do, and good luck this weekend. And we'll we'll catch up soon. Thank you so much. Absolutely. That's no Charlie. balls. Charlie Orsini, everybody. We're going to take a break. We're going to plug our sponsors when we come back. we got a lot of headlines and a lot of baseball to unpack.